So now it's a great pleasure to welcome from the University of Hamburg, uh, Ben Otange, who will report on photocopying beyond the obvious. Ben, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, ideally, when you photocopy something, you expect to get a perfect replica of what you're uh, photocopying. Uh, a photocopied item or version will have the same characteristics or the same properties as the parent material. But what about a case where you want the parent material to be of lower quality than the photocopied version? Uh, let's look at that in this case. And the perfect way to start it is... Uh, what I learned about Germans. You know, a year, a year ago, a time like this, I'd already received a scholarship confirmation that I'll be in German in five months' time. So like any person who is going to a foreign nation, I was on a spree to study what about the Germans, what they want, what they like, how not to cross their path, uh, and most importantly, their culture. Uh, now that I'm in Germany for six months now, I'm still learning. And uh, a few weeks ago, we were in a scholarship meeting, and the least I expected was that Germans, they ensure their key. Interesting. Uh, this was interesting because perfectly, maybe it's not uh, strange to you. It's strange to me because where I come from in Kenya, when you lose your key, you don't insure it. There is always a simple way to get your key. You only need to cross a street or two to get your key done. We call it key cutting, or basically photocopying of key. So this photocopying of key, what we do in Kenya, it will kindly give you, uh, somehow give you a, a quick fix. But it doesn't give you a very good key per se. It gives you something like this. This key here is perfect in terms of its primary functionality. What does the key do? It opens the door. So however ugly it looks, it will open your door. And I was wondering, how about using this key cutting idea, the key analogy, to apply it in biomolecules? Could we have that uh, quick fix on biomolecules, especially on... Uh, Cases like proteins where you need to use a protein. The protein itself is not uh, sensitive to some environment, so you probably need something that's more superior than protein, but still having the parent characteristic of a protein. How do we do this? Uh, the technique is called molecular imprinting technology. It's not a new idea. I'm not coming up with a new idea here. Uh, <laughs> Molecular imprinting technique uh, spans around five decades now, from 1972 when it was first demonstrated. And uh, all that time, uh, much has been done. And how do we do it? Let's look at it in more details. For molecular imprinting, we start with uh, a template. A template is basically what you want to photocopy, basically. So it can be a protein, it can be a carbohydrate, it can be lipid, drug, uh, name it, anything. So what you do is you select your uh, template, and remember uh, our idea is we want a material with superior characteristics than the parent material. So having selected the template, you now uh, decide what superior characteristics do you need. Maybe you need something that will be moving faster, with the stand uh, ash uh, environment or something like that. So you add all those things in, form, in the name of uh, the functional monomers. And then we expect these to be subjected in a polymerization process. A polymerization can be initiated, it can be stopped. What we do, we, we have our polymerization uh, going for about one, hour, uh, one day, 24 hours. So what happens in polymerization, I would describe it as, uh, suppose you pour water in ice rack and then you put it in the fridge. You know what happens? As the temperature 
or as the water uh, is exposed to low temperature, it shrinks into the grooves of the ice cream. That's exactly what happens. So polymerization will happen and then the functional monomers will bind and cross links on the grooves of this template. And then at the end of it, we remove the template. And how do we remove the template? It depends on your, it depend on, the pro, on the template. So what we do in our case, because we are using proteins, we dissolve it or you wash it away. Uh, of course, you use a solvent that will not remove the functional monomers. Otherwise, your imprinted structure will be interfered with. So we get something like this at the end. Uh, uh, grooves that perfectly fit what you were imprinting, but totally different material. This is important because the whole process here uh, takes about four days. I'll give you an alternative. Synthesizing uh, antibodies will take uh, about six months, if I'm not wrong. And we, we do this for only four days. And with these four days, we have not just a perfect binding site of the protein template that we are imprinting, but we also have additional characteristics, something like, you know, if you are having uh, proteins, proteins are sensitive to... And, uh, uh, environment, for example, temperature or uh, pH. But this imprinted structure can be used at any temperature. It's uh, irrespective of the chemical in the surrounding vicinity, it will still be used. So that's a very key advantage. It's also robust, uh, uh, long storage life and all those. So these are the uh, additional characteristics that we are interested in. Does it, it, it sounds so simple and so easy, but is it applicable in all microbiological molecules? I would say literally yes, because the idea is we are imprinting or photocopying uh, templates with grooves, with binding sites. So ideally all microbiological molecules have binding sites so we can imprint. But logically, is it uh, easy? I would say no. One, it's not easy because some microbiological molecules are complex in nature. I want you to imagine this uh, a very powerful microscope and uh, also imagine that this is a uh, protein template with this powerful microscope that is magnifying this protein template to this level, what we are doing is we expect that if this is our binding site, we expect that at the end of it, we want to imprint something like this, this groove. But uh, proteins are not that simple. Sometimes they are, not even sometimes, conformationally proteins are flexible. Structurally they are unstable. You may start with this, but you end up with this. So what happens when your imprinted grooves look like this? It means the new groove will be this, and so it cannot fit. A hopeless case. Uh, maybe to, <laughs> to, to go forward, uh, what we are expecting, if we having imprinted a perfect groove, we expect that when you bring, of course, after removing the template, when you bring it back, it can, uh, it can perfectly fit into the groove. We call it binding and rebinding, specific binding. And I also want to give you an, a case of what we have done. This is results for molecularly imprinted molecules and uh, a control non-molecularly imprinted molecules. What we expect is, before I explain the curves, what we expect is once you imprint uh, the molecule and then you bring the template back, we expect it will perfectly bind on it and therefore its size will increase. So with the increasing concentration of the template, we expect the size to keep on increasing. And how do you know that your, your imprinted structure worked? By comparing what was uh, imprinted without the template at what, and what was imprinted with the template. We realize that there is really no difference between the imprinted and non-imprinted. Technically speaking, what we are expecting is, we are expecting something like this. With the imprinted molecule, we expect the curve to start around between 10 to 1 to 10 micromolar 
of BSA concentration for the, impri for the imprinted, and then it tries so fast. And then with the non-imprinted one, it can go as far as it wants, maybe to increase as, as a result of agglomeration of proteins. So what, we, what, what happens is we have uh, what we call a hopeless case. Uh, how do we move from this hopeless case to the, uh, the idea that you want? We are proposing a, a, a new structure. Instead of using a whole protein, we use a t uh, an epitope. An epitope is a... We are imprinting exactly the grooves, not considering the whole protein. And so we expect at the end of it, maybe when we come up next time, uh, I'll be presenting to you how we manage to solve this through the epitope and not the protein. Thank you, and that's our idea. Thank you. Thank you.